So the perfect slave is a slave that doesn't ask questions, is always busy, is a good consumer, works hard, gets stressed, overworked, constantly is busy with either working hard or spending money. All right, this is Mike Sigula from TrueFury.com and welcome to another video. So today we are talking about control of perception. So control of perception and mind control tricks are common techniques that are used to influence masses, to control how people behave. And this is a big topic and there are many elements to it. But one thing that is pretty obvious is that most people have this desire to fit in among the tribe, among others, among their peers, to fit in society and be liked by others. You know, this is just the basic mechanism, we could say evolutionary mechanism more or less, because when we get accepted in society or by all-powerful tribe, by our peers, we have higher chance to survive. We have higher chance of surviving, right? Known fact. And if we stand out, we prove that we have dominance and we get even more accepted and respected, right? Same thing as for thousands of years. This is one of the behaviors and patterns that we have as human race, right? So now this is being used against us in a very clever ways. So this is what we're gonna talk about today. So first thing is creating the feeling of guilt when someone is questioning narratives, right? So if you have mainstream narrative, that is coming from some kind of authority, corporation, government, scientific organization group, whatever it is, big pharma. And this is being pushed as the norm, as the truth. And you have someone who starts investigating and starts finding some flaws in the narrative, right? But this is the main narrative. It's being pushed everywhere by the media and if person starts digging and finding flaws and asking questions the best way to make them sit quietly is to ridicule them right to call them crazy conspiracy theorists right you know why why this is like the easiest the simplest method to make people not investigate and question the narrative because obviously what we said we want to be accepted by others right so if i'm being labeled as some kind of quack crazy person whatever it is by the all-powerful tribe then you know i don't feel good about myself I get ridiculed. I don't want to be ridiculed by others, right? I want to fit in. I want to be liked by others. So this is a simple method that is used by propagandists to keep population under control and not investigate, not ask questions, not think for themselves. And another thing about it that works really well for them, for the propagandists, is that what happens is that people, average population, they start policing themselves, right? So I talked about it a little bit before, but basically let's take an example. You remember how at the beginning of our pandemic, the official story was that, you know, the virus came from, from the wet market, most likely from the bat or pingolin. And if anyone said anything different to that, they were labeled as crazy conspiracy theorists. Some people or scientists even had slightly different view about it. Maybe it was a leak from the lab, but the narrative said 
No, this is what we know and this is the truth. And everyone who is questioning that gets ridiculed, labeled crazy, blah, 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 blah. A few months later, Biden talks officially about the other side as a possibility. Suddenly everything changes, you know, and this is getting accepted, right? But in that given moment, you are not allowed to question, you are not allowed to research. And if you do, you are labeled crazy, right? Conspiracy theorist. So this is an example. And uh, the way it works in, in given moment is that, you know, if I'm starting to question things and suddenly people and media says different thing and they say that people like myself are crazy conspiracy theorists, then uh, other people, they don't want to associate themselves with someone like me. Maybe they not gonna try to look into it because they don't want to be labeled as crazy, right? They want to fit. They want to be liked by the tribe. So creating ridicule directed towards people who question narratives, this is how this is being manipulated and used. This is how this is used to control public perception, right? You know, don't don't listen to Joe Rogan. He's giving voice to other group of experts. No, no, no. Don't get informed about the other side of the story. Just listen to us, right? This is this is this is how it worked in the past. Basically, the tribe police themselves, right? Because people ridicule other people for trying to just be a critical thinker and inquire and ask questions, right? Oh, don't, don't, don't look there. You don't want to be labeled as crazy conspiracy theorists, right? <laughs> so this is, this is the technique. Basically creating the feelings of shame and guilt when someone is investigating or asking questions, right? So another way how this method of shaming others is used is for example when there are norms in society such as financial status what it means to be successful generally success in our society means i don't know be a ceo of tech company and be a gazillionaire that means you are the most successful ever right and these guys are heroes right but everyone is different first thing right so why if you are completely different and you want to pursue a different path in life why you should be ashamed of choosing something that maybe doesn't generate as much money you know why even say that these guys are some kind of heroes if they are just exploiting the masses for their own selfish reasons you know or they are destroying the planet exploiting resources, workforce, all in the name of greed, consumerism, and ego. This is called success in our world, right? <laughs> the more you destroy the plant to create a lot of crap that you, we can live probably without, <laughs> the more successful you are, right? This is more or less the narrative. And I think people shouldn't be ashamed that maybe the finances or financial status is not the most important thing for them, right? You know, but this is being promoted that you are either, you know, focusing on making as much money as possible or you are a loser, right? Everyone else is a loser. This is being pushed and promoted. Why this is actually pushed and promoted in society? There are a couple of reasons. So the perfect slave is a slave that doesn't ask questions, is always busy, is a good consumer, works hard, gets stressed, overworked, constantly is busy with either working hard or spending money <laughs> and consuming. So this is how the economy can work and how people can be exploited and used as slaves. Just constantly busy with being the hamster on the wheel and, uh, and basically spending all that money on buying new goods, services, etc. as much as possible, way beyond their needs, 
so the system can be fed and maintained, right? This is a perfect slave. Perfect slave is too busy to investigate, ask questions and uh, think for themselves, right? <laughs> they are too stressed as well to think critically as well. It's hard to make rational decisions if you are constantly overworked and stressed or fed with some distractions and entertainment, right? Another thing about it is that, you know, perfect slaves are often unhappy because of this system, right? So for example, someone who maybe is talented in one specific area decides to focus on something completely different because the society says this is what you should do or this is gonna make you financially wealthy, whatever it is. And then the person, instead of cultivating their own gifts and talents and living their passion and purpose and being happy and satisfied and fulfilled, they choose something completely different, which makes them miserable, makes them more money so they can spend more when they are unhappy and they feed to the system once again. So this is why some of these things are being pushed and promoted. You know, keeping slaves in fear, unhappy, miserable, this is what the system does and likes the most. So using shame to influence how people behave is applied in many different ways. And another has to do with external look, right? So this is very common in how corporations create image of female that is unreachable, right? So for example, you know, magazines, advertising, social media, we see models that look perfect, but these beauty standards are unrealistic, right? They have Photoshop filters, you know, and editing, tons of makeup, plastic surgery, perfect picture done by a professional photographer or selected out of maybe 50 different photographs to make someone look perfect. And then you have teenage girls that feel bad about themselves because they don't match these standards. They don't look like the girls on social media, even though these are completely unrealistic and unreachable standards in normal world. So all these practices, all these techniques have one thing in common, to make people feel bad about themselves, to not love ourselves, to make us feel unworthy, less than the rest, to lower people's self-worth and make them act in destructive ways. Another thing I wanted to mention in this video is actually how the system is trying to normalize unethical behavior. And this is done through, for example, using words that hide the real meaning. So one of the areas that I can use here as an example is porn industry, right? Basically, porn is just glorified prostitution where you have a bunch of uh, sexual predators that found ways to fulfill their sexual needs and addiction habits and make money out of it while exploiting people and destroying people's lives, right? But it's being glorified and promoted as something normal and even accessible to everyone to encourage people to use it to encourage women to participate etc you know we're not going to be going into details here how the industry works i'm sure many of you are familiar that you know it's a chain of very very dark things happening there if you look at who are the people behind what kind of things they were involved in you know trafficking uh, exploitation of you know, underage women, etc. All sorts of uh, very negative, very dark things happening in that industry, but it's being pushed and normalized, right? And made accessible to everyone, you know, with a computer and internet, even teenagers, right? So, you know, an example of how this is being normalized and, and wording is used to hide 
the truth is, for example, how like women taking part, they are called porn stars, right? They are stars. They are celebrities. They are, you know, actresses, models, performers, instead of being called, I don't know, hookers or prostitutes or something like that, right? <laughs> Another example of how unethical practices and behaviors are normalized is, you know, use of military, for example. So if a nation wants to steal resources, invade other nation, they need to use military, right? But if the person that goes and does the dirty job believes that they are patriots, that they are heroes, they're gonna be putting more effort <laughs> they can uh, believe that they're fighting the right cause that they're fighting the bad guys right so the system needs to convince them to think that right if they think that they're gonna be more useful they're gonna do their job better but if they would understand that they're just being used as uh, you know paid assassins to steal resources because a bunch of guys sit somewhere in the office to smoke cigars and uh, you know dictates who is doing what while they themselves do nothing and enjoy their comfortable lives if if these people the military would understand how it works they wouldn't be willing to you know perform in the way as expected right so they need to be convinced and brainwashed to think that they are heroes, that they're fighting the bad guys, that they are, you know, patriots doing something for the great good, right? <laughs> so normalizing unethical practices and behaviors is a common technique used by the system propagandists to just control the masses, right? Alcohol consumption, I think, you know, this is being pushed as something that is cool, especially if you're young, right? This is something cool, right? You're drinking young, that's great, right? <laughs> well, you know, it's not very beneficial, it destroys your body, and all sorts of negative consequences come from it. But if the industry and the system is promoting it as something cool, you know, using marketing, PR, etc., movies, entertainment, then people accept it and start using it, right? This is how the system is manipulating the masses so they are more obedient and become a part of the system, right? So that's it for today. We're gonna do an update with different techniques because there are plenty of techniques. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. If this video resonated with you, please share it with your friends on social media. Give it a like. Uh, let me know in the comments what do you think about it. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe because we have a lot of content that talks about these types of topics. So thanks for watching until next time.